Hi. India has transformed dramatically in terms of technology. All of us have started using UPI. We are connected to technology, and it is something that we know, and the world knows about us. When we think of technology, typically, the world looks at us as a bunch of swanky offices, software engineers, people from premium institutes coming back and building software for the world. Uh, they also see a bunch of you know, cows on the streets and a little bit of a traffic, as, traffic jams as well. But to them, this is the India which represents technology. Let me tell you a quick story. It was the COVID time, and during the COVID time, we wanted to go to some place which is very remote. So we found this place north of Bangalore. It's called Kauchkal. It's a remote place, no habitation, complete jungle area, under a huge rock. There was a small temple. So we went to the temple. It was COVID time, so we went to the temple. And we talked to the pujari in terms of saying, COVID must have hit you badly. He says, no, sir. Our income has gone up seven times. I was surprised. So I asked him, how? He said, no, sir. People send a WhatsApp message. We do puja on WhatsApp video, and they Google pay us. Right? That is India. So today he says that before people from Bangalore were coming in and getting puja done, now we have got people from Delhi and even two people from abroad who come back and get puja done. That pujari sitting in that place has gone international. Right? That is the power of technology and that is the power of digital India in terms of how we are seeing. And this is not an isolated incident. Right? There are fishermen in Mumbai who used to go early in the morning to catch fish. The moment they came back and landed, they had a vendor there who would buy the fish off them. And fish spoils very fast, so they didn't have a choice. They had to agree to the costs of that vendor. What happened with technology coming in is these fishermen in the boats, once they have their catch, do a WhatsApp voice call to say, this is the catch I have. And various vendors come back and bid for the fish. Whichever is the best bid, they land their boats at that place. So suddenly, the nexus of the vendors has gone away. They are no longer dependent on them, and their in income has increased multiple times. This is the new India. When we talk of digital, when we talk of technology, it is not represented just in the software engineering campuses. It is represented in the hinterland of India. All of these people depend on technology. All of these people are jumping onto the technology bandwagon. But what happens if the technology does not support them? There was this enterprise which came back and granted $6 million to an NGO to come back and build a technology platform for them. The NGO was very thrilled. They took on the whole stuff. They got The enterprise got it built, gave it off to them at no cost. And they started using this technology to come back and create an impact in the community. Once the story was good, once the story was published, the enterprise moved on. Now, the NGO had to manage this technology by itself. Very soon, updates were not there, changes were not being managed. They didn't know what to do next. They didn't know how to upgrade it. They didn't know how to maintain it. And they had to go back and start talking to software companies to see if a maintenance and upgrade of their software can be done. Now look at the whole proposition. An NGO which is focused in terms of doing good in the community is now looking at this whole white elephant and trying to figure out what to do with it. Because that has become a crucial part of how they deliver services to their community. Many a time, when we come back and give technology to somebody, we think it's a great idea, right? But when we take away this technology, it becomes a much bigger pain. If we never had this technology, it wouldn't have mattered. But giving everyone a mobile phone and then taking it away is really, really painful. Can you imagine a day in your life without your mobile phone? Auto rickshaw drivers in Bangalore who have lived in Bangalore throughout and who come back and you know, could take you anywhere in Bangalore, today use Google Maps to reach their destination. Once he's hooked on to that, if you suddenly come back and ask him, can we go somewhere? He says, no, sir, Google Maps down there. Because the technology is not available, it is now impacting their livelihood. So the challenge that we have is technology is a great enabler, 
but it is something that we should we should make it accessible to the common man. Take an example. If we take a tractor built in Germany, fantastic technology, etc., and we come back and say we will put this into rural areas and get the farmers to come back and start using it. They are very happy, great work. But what happens when the tractor breaks down? Suddenly, they have lost their old ability of the way they were working, are dependent on this, which is no longer working for them. Instead, if rather than just importing the tractor, the, we had come back and put a process in place which says that there is a technology transfer. Somebody local assembles it, somebody local manages it, somebody local maintains it, Somebody local understand how it works and helps out the farmer in terms of taking the whole service forward, it would have come back and democratized the technology and made it so much more useful. Now, the interesting part is it doesn't stop there. The moment you do that, the local partner now comes back and says, oh, this tractor will not work the same way in Himachal, in Rajasthan, and in the plains of the south. So they will start innovating they will add on additional technologies, they will add on drone technologies, etc., to come back and customize this and personalize this to the way the farmers in their communities work. That is when we truly have the ability to come back and absorb the technology to create a local impact. Is it possible for us to do this at scale across the nation? Meet the team of kids who are trying out this experiment. These kids are from across India. They are from Haryana, they are from Delhi, they are from Bihar, they are from Orissa, they are from Karnataka. They don't have an engineering degree. They are all class 12 pass. They are pursuing their course in IGNU just to get a degree. These kids have learned technology and are building out software technology platforms for other NGOs. They have built a platform called Vidya which can be used in government schools where kids can click a button, ask a question, it recognizes their speech, sends it to an AI engine, brings back the answer and reads it back to them. And the interesting part is it does this in their local language. And all of this was built by these kids. They know how to manage it, they know how to take it forward. When they go to the schools, they are like, this is exactly the same as our government schools. They have a connect there, right? So they know how the kids are utilizing and the kids connect back to them. So when we go there, the kids don't talk to us at all. The kids directly go to these uh, girls and say, didi, 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 and they come back and start talking to them, right? That is the effect they have on the local community. These kids are also brave enough to come back and say that they want to now create this as their own business. They want to take this out in terms of coming back and creating solutions for other NGOs. They have already come back and trained the second batch of kids to come back and work with technology like this. So now they are no longer afraid of technology and they are willing to go out and say we will build solutions for multiple other NGOs which are solving the local problem. But when we do this, technology is a great factor. Who decides what is needed? We have product companies which come back and say, this is a product that we have and we'll take it out to the market. So you see startups in terms of talking of go-to-market, understanding the market and stuff, right? We also need people who understand what ha is happening at the grassroots level. That is where our wisdom from the ages comes in. This is Dr. Kedar. Dr. Kedar is an ex-IS officer and at the grand old age of 67, he decided to join a startup that was building an exoskeleton for people with spinal cord injuries. Now, Dr. Kedar is a person who struggles with his mobile phone. He struggles with his laptop, right? He doesn't have a vehicle that he drives. He uses public transport. But he's a person who at the age of 67 was willing to come back and jump in to a startup building an amazing technology out of India. And one of the reasons he can do that, and one of the reasons a lot of these IAS officers and other senior people can do this, is they are rooted in the challenges of the local community. When Dr. Kedar visited an institution and he saw a PhD research happening on some AI technology, he didn't understand the AI part of it. 
But he quickly came back and said, this can solve this problem in the community, which led to a product being created out of it. Right? So that is the benefit that you get when you take people who understand the grassroots challenges and who can come back and connect this. Now, technology is a great leveler. It comes back and opens up a box of knowledge for us. However, India is a very diverse nation. What works in one place needs to be contextualized somewhere else. Right? So India is not a nation where we can come back and standardize and say this works. We need local innovators who are coming back and working in terms of how to apply this technology in the local context. So can we come back and start looking at building up these social innovation centers in, across the nation? These social innovation centers will be the heart of our whole technology implementation. Innovation in India does not come from boardrooms, but it comes from the hearts and minds of the people. It comes from the pujari who wants to take his age-old practice out into the market. It comes from the farmers and fishermen who want to come back and do better with what they are doing. It comes from the hearts of these kids who are brave enough to come back and say, we will explore technology in our local communities. And it comes from the heart of the 67-year-old person who does not understand technology, but he cares for his community so much that he is willing to come back and put all this together. This is the technological pulse of how India is progressing. If we can come back and create a social innovation center, a place where there is no limit to knowledge, a place where local challenges will meet local innovation, and a place where we don't import technology, but we come back and take the technology, understand it, modify it, contextualize it, and make it local. That is what will drive our country forward in terms of a change from an innovation perspective. India has around 800 districts. Can you imagine having 800 plus social innovation centers which are coming back and working with all of these grassroots innovation and taking this kind of a change forward? A true social impact is when we come back and democratize technologies and take it down to the grassroots levels. Thank you.